Hi, it's Kitty Anderson again. Um, this week I want to talk about estrogen. I had a really good question from someone on my YouTube comments and their question was, how do I know if I've got too much estrogen in my HRT? And it's a great question because we don't really have good guidance about what we're supposed to be doing when it comes to dosing. So I want to get really specific on dosing, but I'm not going to stick just to the question of what does too much estrogen look like? I want to also talk about what does too little estrogen look like? Because that is actually the most common experience for American women. We only have 3% of American women past menopause using HRT to support their body systems. So it's really a social justice issue. Low income women in America also have an even bigger problem getting HRT. A lot of that problem revolves around the fact that we look to our friends and if our social group is not doing HRT, we just don't have a role model. And that's one of the things that got me motivated to take my story to video is that women need a friend. That's me, somebody thriving on HRT, somebody who says, I love it. I want it. I want the highest dose possible. I've looked at all the research. Um, and checked in at the menopause societies, and it's just such a positive thing. It's such a positive experience. It's a molecule that I used to make. So it's really something I want to put back in my body. And I think it's going to protect me in spite of the fact that there's a lot of kind of clickbait out there that's going to try and convince you to buy something else, CBD oil, essential oils, um, all these painkillers, sleep medications, all these things that you can pitch, you can do without these things if you get your HRT because they're actually going to be doing the function that your body needs. So, so the question was, let me answer this real quick. What does too much estrogen look like? So the biggest signal that your estrogen is too high is that your breasts are dense. They are, um, they're kind of stationary, right? So they're not as flexible. You just don't have that flexibility. Now, if you have too little estrogen, your breasts are flat, right? They don't have any shape. They don't have this shape. So when you add HRT, your breasts will go back to this shape because they're activated naturally by estradiol HRT. It is a normal thing for your breasts to be activated by estrogen because you use them in pregnancy and breastfeeding, right? So they're tools for you. They're magical tools. They give you um, this magical power of feeding another human being. And so estrogen is a part of making that magic work. So estrogen is not a dirty word. Estrogen is a really important function in the female body. The men actually have estrogen as well. Um, but I'm not going to go there right now. So that's kind of the answer to it. Um, what might be happening in your body if you are getting dense breasts, some sensitivity in your breasts are normal with HRT. Um, pain is <clears throat> not normal. Pain is not normal. Um, so there can be an estrogen buildup in your body, just like premenopausally, you can have an estrogen buildup in your body and your breasts can hurt. So you, this is something you might have experienced before. And really a high fiber diet is part of pulling down the estrogen and processing it. It's really important that you have a very healthy diet and vegetables should be a massive part of that. So you don't have to pull down your HRT dose for estradiol if your breasts are painful or dense. You can actually bump up your fiber load and you can make it go away and normalize that level of estrogen in your body. So that's the short answer. Now the long answer includes 
why do we have all these low estrogen products on the market? Why don't I have enough estrogen? You could look at your breasts and see that they're flat and say, huh, I'm taking HRT, but it doesn't seem to be working. So that's a signal to you that you're not on a high enough dose to work systemically inside your body. So if you're using vaginal HRT, most of those are low dose products and they're only meant to work in the area that you apply it, right? So they're only meant to keep the vaginal tissue a little stronger um, and make sex less painful, right? So that tissue is lubricated and it's working for you. But that is usually an add-on to your regular HRT, which should be transdermal estradiol. I want to make sure you're using the right ingredient um, if you're using some of those almost estradiol products with a different ingredient on the label, then you're in trouble. Basically, it's not going to give you all the functions that you need. Um, so what happened is we had a big study in 2002, the WHI study. And after that came out, there was kind of a scare that... Um, the HRT was causing an increase in breast cancer, a very small increase. It was like a few cases per 1000 HRT users. So it wasn't everybody taking HRT at all, um, but that got everyone scared. And so the prescribers kind of pulled back and then the drug companies stepped forward with all these low dose products. But guess what? The low dose products are not what they're using to reverse Alzheimer's. To reverse Alzheimer's, they're using two milligrams of 0.1% estradiol. So that's two of the little packets. And you're probably gonna be dosed at one of those little packets. So the big question is, why are we low dosing estradiol? We, only because of this 2002 study, I think, and the drug companies responded with a lot of low dose products. Um, and it wasn't until 2021 when the International Menopause Society said those breast cancer risks that they found in 2002 were not related to how much you were using. So that right there tells you it's probably just loosely related, not even related at all. And then there's other, there's a book called Estrogen Matters that you can get into if you really wanna follow the breast cancer basic research. So um, if you have had breast cancer before, they are less likely to give you HRT, but a compounder, so a uh, functional pharmacy will basically uh, get you on HRT for quality of life. So a different type of provider, a non-OBGYN, will probably get you on it for quality of life because you are still stuck with the cardiovascular risk of low estrogen and the bone weakness risk of low estrogen. You're stuck with all those other risks, um, which can also kill you. And breast cancer actually, fun, funny, it doesn't kill you anymore. We get on it and we get it solved. So a lot of women are still with breast cancer deciding to do HRT. And there are providers out there that will help you. So that's kind of the short answer, short and long answer. Estrogen is good for you. Your body loves it. It lets you create another human being. It is pretty amazing stuff. I counted 80 functions in the body. So I am one of those people that's pushing my doctor to give me the highest dose. And I have to be very aggressive with a conventional OBGYN. So I take in research and I show her um, that this is not dose related. So we should dose me high enough so that I feel really well. On the high doses, you're gonna get emotional health, which is awesome. You're gonna get your energy back. You're gonna get deeper sleep. You get to discontinue the sleep medications that all of those different types of sleep medications are causing other additional problems. Many, I just read some research today, many of those are causing memory loss and dementia. And some of it's temporary, but some of it's permanent. You do not want to go there. Other drugs have risks. In America, we allow a drug on the market 
even if it hurts your cognition. They just don't measure it in any of the tests, right? So they're not going to make a claim. This helps your cognition. They're not going to make that claim. So because they don't make the claim, they don't have to test for it in the research. And then they get to release it to the market. Yes, you could go to sleep. It's not a beautiful deep sleep that estradiol will give you, but you will go to sleep, um, a type of sleep that actually hurts your memory. So you don't want to do this. You want to make sure that you use as much estradiol as you need to get a deep sleep so you can drop those other medications. It's going to be a matter of maintaining your brain health over time. So that was the big question this week is how much estradiol is too much? And it depends on you and your diet, but it makes a lot of sense to go ahead and push for the higher doses. And then you can also make sure that as you dose up your estradiol, you're going to balance it with progesterone at a higher dose. And then they might ask you to do an ultrasound of your endometrial lining. So it's a really simple, harmless procedure. And they want to make sure that it's under four millimeters. So it's just, they've just got this kind of arbitrary spot. So, so that would be a process that you could bring up with your doctor that if you don't think that higher estradiol is a good idea, how about we try it? for three months and I'll do an ultrasound at the end of that and we'll make sure that I am not having endometrial buildup because that seems to be something that they caution about. Once again, that's not going to kill you. I've had it several times within this 14 year period and it's never been pathology. It's never been an issue. It's just things were out of balance between the estradiol and the progesterone. And it wasn't cancer and it <laughs> wasn't polyps and it wasn't fibroids and it wasn't, it wasn't anything. It was just a normal period, you know, after menopause. So, and I know that sounds really funny, but um, they will panic. The OBGYN will usually panic, but I really didn't feel any pain, didn't feel anything different. It felt like a regular period. Here it was, you know, 13 years later, but um, it felt normal. It felt like that tissue was doing its job. It was building up because the estradiol and the progesterone were not balanced. We got that back into balance and it went boom, right back to normal. So it's not something to really be afraid of. I'd be much more afraid of not having estradiol in my life. Now that I know how much it does, I won't ever live without it. I will ask for it to be pumped into my coffin. So that's my thinking on estradiol right now. Hope that answers your question. Bye.